Many thanks to Hammond Auto and Cross4WD for making this video possible. If you're in the market for a new Volvo or some quality off-roading parts, these are definitely the go-to places in these neck of the woods. Decha Duster. The video we did on it gained a lot of traction for its somewhat humorous approach, I hope. And in Finland you need to have a sense of humor about it as well. Here, and apparently in Russia, the Duster is the go-to grandma mobile. The most of roading it will ever see is a slightly pothole gravel road bit that leads to said grandma's summer cottage. So doing a video based solely on off-roading and four-wheel drive drifting on snow isn't a straight-faced representation of a Duster we know and dislike. Bring in the commenters. Many of you seem to think we downplayed the whole vehicle a bit. And many of you who thought so were from Central or Southern Europe. And just by doing a quick Google search, you can find very off-road oriented following for this vehicle and a ton of aftermarket too. So dear commenters, you know what? Keep commenting, keep subscribing, hitting bells and all that other bullshit. Ask and you shall receive. This here is a duster, but not any duster. This is the one built by Cross4WD. The good people there have uh, modified it with slightly aesthetic stuff like the roof rack, the lead bars, the side bars and all sorts of bars. But most importantly, it has new coilovers. These pedders units are actually very impressive. They provide the duster with a nice amount of lift and a whole lot of refinement. The struts are also foam filled, so they're more stable than traditional shocks when it comes to temperature differences and they're not so prone to overheating as gas or oil filled struts. The irony is that here on these twists and turns of these paved roads, this thing actually rides better than the original one, even though it has an off-roady coilover setup. Just makes one wonder why it wasn't fitted with something like this straight from the factory. Well, actually it doesn't. This is, after all, to put it nicely, built to a price point. The interior materials, the NVH, noise control and insulation, and the diesel generator that's passed on as an engine, all tell a tale of sub Land Cruiser price. But you know what? At least it's honest about it. I sort of like that. There are no high gloss black plastics trying to hide this stuff underneath it. There are no unnecessary electronics to go wrong. And even though this uh, diesel generator they call an engine is a bit rough around the edges and it has B group Audi Quattro levels of turbo lag, it's a torquey little unit and it's four pot diesel, so what do you expect? The Nissan Renault 1.5 DCI diesel in question, I haven't heard any horror stories about it as I have with the more refined, more expensive and more sophisticated German rivals, for example. It is very tool-like. And that's a good word for it. It's very tool-like. And now on these tarmac roads it's the wrong kind of tool. It's a bit like hitting a nail with a screwdriver. I mean. Eventually you'll get the nail in there, but it's still the wrong tool. So let's turn off the tarmac road and start digging beyond the trunk spaces and Apple car place. And I thought it would be a good idea to start off by telling you how this four-wheel drive system works. And this location seems like a good place for it. The more eagle-eyed of you might have noticed, it's sort of familiar to us already. Uh, this racetrack carved on the frozen lake has been one of the main stages for our <coughs> scientific research on the reliability of old Mercedes. Two-wheel drive old Mercedes. So, let's see how this four-wheel drive system gets along by putting it from auto to four-wheel drive lock. And I guess it's three, two, one, go. It isn't a traditional full-time four-wheel drive system, but with that knob you can make it behave like one. What I mean by that is that it engages the clutch pack in the rear differential, 
and then it distributes what power it has 50-50 front to rear. But before filling in your entry form for the next year's Nestor Rally, keep in mind that the system auto disengages at 80 kph and goes into the auto mode where it'll send up to 50% of the power to rear only when needed. Or as we've discovered with similar systems, in performance driving it's usually just a moment after you would have needed it. But as there is with the VW Holdex, there are mods available for the control module to make it sharper or to overrule the 80 kph limits. But don't for one second think you're getting a bargain Evo with this thing. Yeah, it isn't exactly an Evo, this thing. It's quite prone to understeer, but the way to do it is to manhandle it like this. Get on the throttle early enough. Oh, it's still pushing, still pushing, still pushing. And finally, you get the back turned and off you go. Aivan so, what we've discovered so far is that the four-wheel drive system is capable of behaving like something that we would call a four-wheel drive system and not a slippery slope helper. So that's good. Let's find out what else is good. These all-terrains give the car a good amount of grip. I've been told by people who know what they're talking about, you can run them as low as 0.8 of a bar. I'm running 1.5 now and as you can see, absolutely no problem. The approach angle is good enough for most of this stuff, front and rear. If you were, say, the foreman of this quarry and you found your worker slacking off at the top of this steep hill, thinking you wouldn't climb up there, they'd be wrong. Because you wouldn't muddy up your loafers, you would just simply climb up there with this duster with your Romanian horn blazing. This angle monitor is quite a fun thing too. Now if this car was my own, I'd be really intrigued to see how many lateral degrees I can pull before this thing tips over. Around 20 is as far as I'll go now. Cause it, I know it doesn't get through on camera, but trust me, it feels like it really will tip over. Ooh, that's a steep slope. Rock sliders on side skirts are a nice addition as well, as it gives you a bit more confidence with the uncladded underbody. But let's say one of your workers is a bit more thorough than the others with his siesta plans, and he or she has climbed over this hill that no duster has any business climbing over. But you, as one persistent quarry foreman, wouldn't give up, so you'll try anyway. And lo and behold, you'll get stuck midway. And now I just happen to be in that exact situation, but in reverse. Okay, let's see. Engage reverse, handbrake off, just roll off the brake and roll off the clutch and here we go. Look, I'm not doing anything. And the thing just calculates the engine braking and the individual brakes itself. And down we go. Best of all, it's not too big for this sort of stuff. This is especially helpful in the forest trails, where this car is used a lot according to people of Cross 4WD. It would be even better if the wheelbase was a bit shorter, but then again this thing can accommodate your whole family when you watch your kids get sick on the back seat while you're going sideways in a quarry, I guess. Now, there was a third part and a grande finale planned for this video, but first the lack of snow and then a certain virus sort of shat all over that plan. 
At first I thought I wouldn't even release this video because it was cut short, but then I thought, what the hell, this needs to be said. With these modifications, this duster is better on-road and off the road than the standard version. The ride quality is way better. It controls its top-heavy bulk way better when there's grip and when there's not. These tires work wonders with the four-wheel drive system and pull you out of from every bit of trouble you dare to go into. This just makes me wonder, even with the low low price point, why on earth is this thing fitted with those abysmal things they dare to call shocks from the factory? With a couple of grand more, this is a whole new animal. In my book, this thing is now a serious player and I totally get its off the beaten path following in our southern neighboring countries. And I have to be honest, in its stock form, I didn't before. And who have I got to thank for this epiphany? You, the viewers, the commoners. You made me take a closer look. So thanks. Please keep doing so. That's why these interactive platforms rule. Stay safe out there, people. We'll get through this soon. <laughs>